Every play begins with a serve. It's how you start the point in volleyball. There is a jump serve or a float serve or a jump floater. All work, but which is right for you? Let's serve it up. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Marlowe here with Olympic gold medalist Misty May. We're here to coach you on your serve. Misty, why is a good serve so important? Well, Chris, the serve is really the one that starts the rally. If you have an effective serve, you can get the other team on their heels or force them to do something they don't want to. What is the ideal serve? Well, you have three types. You have the float, jump serve, and jump float. I prefer the float serve, but I do have an effective jump serve at times. The float serve moves much like the knuckleball, whereas the jump float, you're leaving the ground, serving it just like a float serve. It's moving at a faster pace. But I think the most effective serve is definitely the jump serve. You're going to get off the ground, put a lot of top spin on it. It's going to come fast. Hopefully it hits the ground before the passers are able to move to it. Okay, serve hard and score some points. Don't forget that here on Sports School, you can use your remote to stop, pause, rewind, or fast forward any of the training techniques that we're demonstrating. This means you are in total control. You can learn at your own pace. You have 12 seconds in between each serve, so when you get back to the end line, whether you're serving from the right side, the middle, or the left side of the court, take your time. The pressure is more on the opponents than it is on yourself. For the float serve, you want your weight on your back, right foot. You don't want your stance too open. You want it, you want both feet right under your body. So weight on your right foot, because you're gonna transfer your weight later on on your follow through to your left, just like setting. When I hold the ball, I'm gonna hold it on the right side, right in front of my right shoulder in a comfortable position. I'm not palming the ball and it's not on my fingertips. The ball's just rested naturally. I wanna serve where my hips are facing. So if I wanna serve corner to corner, I'm gonna face this way and let my opponents know it's coming. If I wanna serve down the line, I'm gonna face in the direction I wanna serve the ball. So now that I'm holding the ball, weight is distributed, distributed on my back leg. My hand that's gonna hit the ball is flat. You don't want a rounded hand, you don't want it too firm. You want it nice and relaxed, but a nice flat surface so when you hit the ball, it's like you're hitting a wall. Sometimes players make the mistake and will toss the ball. Tossing can be kind of inconsistent, so that's why I prefer to say lift. If I lift the ball, it should fall in front of my right my right leg in front of my right shoulder every time I lift it up. Now we're ready to serve. So I'm gonna back up. I have 12 seconds in between, in between when the ref blows the whistle. I'm gonna set up, comfortable position, right leg bearing most of my weight, hands in ready position. I'm gonna lift the ball, weight's gonna come forward, and I'm gonna contact it, watching my hand hit the ball, following through with my weight transferring to my left foot. I'm gonna contact the ball and stop my hand. For the float serve, that's gonna cause the movement, like the knuckleball movement. Okay, Misty taught you how to serve. Now we're going to break it down, starting with the toss. First, face where you want the ball to go. Lift the ball up over your head in front of your attacking shoulder. Controlling the toss is key to a good serve. Once you have your toss under control, you can step in and serve it. Remember to swing and stop your hand on contact. Ideally, you should face where you want the ball to go. If you want to serve it harder, transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot harder. Normally you start close to the net. The better you get as a server, you can back up. If you can, you would like to contact the ball in the center with a hard contact in order to get that knuckleball effect and get movement on the ball. get a good float serve down, to get a little more difficult, you can move on to the jump float serve. It's going to have a little more power and the ball is going to be moving a little quicker. What you want to do is mark your steps back. 
Myself, I like to take a three-step approach. Some players, you might like to take a four-step approach to give yourself better timing. So when you mark off your steps, I prefer to toss with two hands. It gives me a little more consistent toss. And again, you wanna make sure that the ball stays on the right side of your body. Again, like float serve, as soon as you toss the ball up, you're gonna get off the ground. You wanna watch your hand, contact the ball, flat hand, stop it like you're hitting the wall. Again, that's gonna cause that movement. You may end up landing inside the court, that's okay, but before, you have to take off from behind the white line. You can't take a step on the white line, otherwise that's a point and the ball goes to the other team. Two-hand toss is the easiest toss. It's gonna give you a little more consistency. Some players may prefer to toss with one hand, right hand or left hand, but I prefer to toss with two hands. It gives me a little more consistent toss. And again, I wanna keep it in front of my right shoulder. Once you have the floater down, you can add the jump, thus the jump floater. Again, you want to start with a toss. Ideally, you want to toss it up with no spin. Once you're able to control the toss, then it's time to move on to the approach. Footwork for a right-hander should be three steps. The sequence would be left, right, left. The last two steps are key to help you jump up. You've controlled the toss, you've worked on your footwork, now it's time to serve the jump float. The swing is the same as the floater from the ground. Try to contact the ball with a high elbow, high over the net, sharp contact, stopping your hand, imparting the knuckleball effect. As you feel more comfortable, you can back away from the net to increase your distance and accuracy. Remember, when you try this serve from behind the end line, you can jump behind the line and land in the court. That is legal. Try to get a good broad jump. Hard flat serve, knuckleball effect, and that should score a point. Now for the third option in serves. We already talked about the float, jump float, now the most powerful serve used today, the jump serve. A lot of the top men and women, both internationally and domestically, use the jump serve and it can be a very effective serve once you get it down. Like the jump float, you're also gonna take a three-step or a four-step approach. I like the three-step approach, so again, you wanna mark off your step so that you know that you're gonna land in the same spot all the time. From here, my weight is on the right side. I'm gonna transfer my weight to my left foot Take a step with my left, quick right left. I'm gonna be in the air. Left arm is gonna point up at the ball. I'm gonna keep the ball on my right side. Right arm, elbow stays high. I'm gonna watch my hand come under and finish over the ball, reaching for my forearm and continuing the follow through down, like I'm throwing a ball. Like the jump, jump float, you stop your hand. With the jump serve now, you're gonna continue the motion all the way through. Again, what I wanna concentrate on is that I'm not moving while I toss the ball. Give yourself time, in case you do make a mistake with the toss, that you're not leaving too early. So I'm gonna to toss the ball, then I'll take a step with my left, come in right left, and attack the ball. Misty May's got a heck of a jump serve, don't you think? Now, how do you learn it? Let's take you through a succession of drills. First up is the toss. You start on the ground, flip the ball up in the air like an attack, swing and try to impart heavy topspin. 
First thing you want to practice when you're working on a jump serve is the arm swing. You toss the ball up with reverse rotation, and the arm swing is much like a spike. Reach high. Unlike the jump floater, you don't want a knuckleball effect. You want a heavy topspin serve. Once you've mastered the toss and the topspin attack, then it's time to add the footwork. Ideally, it should be a three-step approach. Left, right, left. Let the ball drop. Try to maintain the ball on your hitting shoulder. Once you're consistent with your toss, your arm swing, and your approach, then it's time to put it all together. Once again, the footwork for right-handers is a quick left, right, left. Try to contact the ball high over the net. The swing for a jump serve is a lot like throwing a ball. So you swing and you contact all the way down to your body. As you feel more comfortable, you can back up to the end line. Since the jump serve is a lot like attacking, you have to remember to cushion yourself once you land to prevent injury. The jump serve is the most difficult serve to learn, but once you master it, it can be a big weapon for you. To recap, there are three types of volleyball serves, the floater, the jump floater, and the jump serve. For the floater, you toss the ball out in front, step in as you're about to strike, and hit it with quick, sharp contact. You want as little rotation as possible. For the jump floater, the toss is farther out, and your approach should be consistent. For a powerful topspin jump serve, flick your wrist on the toss to give a topspin. Then you strike the volleyball with more power and more contact, breaking your wrist and elbow to create spin. The serve is not usually an advantage in volleyball, but if you have a good one, it makes attacking harder for the other team.